we're not considering ourselves legends in truth, although our mothers are convinced that we are. <laughs> but we chose that name just because we wanted to tell you some of the stories and the myths and the legends, and of course play the music of this instrument that we, we all love so much. Well, one morning, after a tremendous great storm, he wandered along the sands, and what did he find? Washed up on the shore, but of all things he found a harp in tune. <laughs> so he picked it up, and he put it under his arm, and he continued his wanderings along the sands. kings and all the chieftains and the poets and stuff like that, they gave all these people and so harp players were set up on the roads to play for whoever they could coax into some sort of hospitality. And if you had a big warm house back in those times, probably every night of your life, just at supper time, you'd hear a knock on the door and you'd say, damn, <laughs> it's another harp player at the door. And he'd say, hello there, would you mind if I stayed with you for eight or nine years? <laughs> same people who bring you IKEA, the Swedish nuclear <laughs> <laughs> And I swear, this is what he said. Um, you're going to go down that road there for five miles. And on the right hand side, you're going to find a great big white hotel, a beautiful great big white hotel. You can't miss it. You're going to turn left at that great big white beautiful hotel. But uh, come to think of it now, uh, that hotel burnt down three years ago. got their myths into the Irish, and uh, the great Queen Elizabeth I, you know, Kate Blanchett, Judy Dench, <laughs> Ellen Mirren, Betty Davis, that Queen Elizabeth I, she sent her boy toy, a fellow by the name of the Earl of Essex, who was a complete and utter wanker, <laughs> over to Ireland to try to subdue the Irish. Well, he had no success whatsoever, but he had a lot of great dinner parties, and on one occasion, his secretary, a man by the name of Henry Harvey, wrote down what happened on that occasion. And then it chanced that being next to the window, I noticed what I fancy was not seen by the rest of the company. For as soon as the strain song began, all the cans, gallow glasses and other wild Irish outside started and stared, seeming to prick up their ears as a horse does at the sound of a trumpet. Sherlock was only 16 when he first stepped into Alderford House. His father John was a good man. He had a lovely bit of a farm in the rich lands of County Meath.
There were music days with a rivalry of harpers, a shrilling of fiddlers, and a mighty outshouting of tenors. She traveled from town to town in sun and rain, the harp on her back or in her hands. I don't know how many of you have been in a nail salon, but it is a very intensely feminine place. And I felt a little bit nervous. And so I'm sitting in under the hairdryer after the perm, and um, I'm reading Cosmo, and it's fabulous. But the lady next to me in the next door dryer was reading Red Book Magazine. And in Red Book Magazine was a story called Guillon's Harp by Ursula K. Le Guin. And so I said, look, uh, sweetie, can I trade magazines with you? And she said, sure, big boy. So we would like to tell you the story now. And uh, most of the music, as maybe you will know, some of you seem to know, uh, most of it was written by uh, Lisa, and here we hope you like it. The harp had come to Guilan from her mother, and so had her mastery of it, people said. Ah, oh, they said when Guillon played, you can tell, that is Diera's touch. May the blessing of light be on you. Light without and light within. May the blessed sunlight shine on you and warm your heart till it glows like a great peat fire. <laughs> 